All right, my friends, we are going to take a look at the minimum angle that you can lean a ladder against a rough wall um, with a rough floor. So the coefficient of friction of the wall is going to be mu w, and the coefficient of uh, static friction of the floor will be uh, mu f. Well, so here's our ladder leaning up against the wall at some angle theta. And the first thing we should do is draw the forces on this ladder. Uh, so, of course, there would be the weight downward acting on the center mass of the ladder. Uh, there would be a normal force from where it touches the floor, and there would be a normal force from where it touches the wall. Uh, now, the ladder would slide to the left if there wasn't a friction force on the floor uh, pushing back to the right. And if the ladder's not going to slip or we're finding the minimum angle, we're going to max out that static friction. So we're going to ramp it all the way up to mu times n. Uh, and then likewise, if the wall is rough, um, then the friction force on the wall would be upward. Um, or rather the friction force on the ladder or the wall on the ladder would be upward and that would be equal to mu wall times n of the wall. And so now let's look at the forces. Um, well, there's going to be a, um, in a static situation, the horizontal forces will balance. So the normal force to the left will be balanced by the um, friction force on the floor that's to the right. So those babies will balance. The vertical forces would all balance. Well, there's three vertical forces. There's two upward forces, which are normal from the floor, and the friction force from the wall. Those are up, and then those balance the downward force of uh, mg. So there's our two force statements balancing the horizontal and vertical forces. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, eliminate um, uh, the normal force from the floor. Um, the way I'm going to go about that is I'm going to multiply the vertical equation here um, by mu f. So I'm going to multiply every term by mu f. So mu f times nf, well, that's nw, so that's where that term comes from. And then the other two terms are just also getting multiplied by mu f. So you get that statement. And what's nice is nf is now gone as an unknown. So we have this statement for the normal force on the wall, uh, of the wall on the ladder. And so um, what we can do is we can solve for that in terms of mg. Um, so if you just factor out normal force of the wall um, and then divide the coefficients of it over, you would get mu f mg and then divided by 1 plus mu f mu w. So it's just like proportional to mg. So just to make the algebra less annoying later for the moment, I'm just going to call this coefficient of mg, like all this stuff, I'm just going to call it a new constant called c. Um, and that will just make the algebra easier later. Um, well, so um, we haven't really invoked the angle yet, and so we're going to learn about that um, from looking at uh, the torque on the, um, on the system. And, of course, if this ladder is to be static, then the sum of the torques need to be zero. Now, if you're going to look at torques, um, we're going to have to find components of these forces that are perpendicular to the ladder. Um, so I'm going to set up a little geometry first. So let's drop a couple perpendiculars to the ladder here. Um, and we're, what we're going to do is we're going to find places where this angle theta shows up again. Um, so one place where theta shows up again is right here. And now why is that? Because right where I'm wiggling the mouse, that would be 90 minus theta. Um, so theta plus 90 degrees, which would be down here, um, plus this angle would add to 180. So that makes where I'm wiggling the mouse 90 minus theta, which makes this one theta. Uh, another place where theta shows up um, would be right here. Well, that's because the normal force in the wall is parallel to the floor, and that makes these um, alternate interior angles. So those are both theta. Um, and then we're going to see theta show up, oh, well, up, up here because this little angle where I'm wiggling the mouse would be 90 minus theta, um, which makes this little guy theta right here. Um, and that's just going to make it easier for us to do some trigonometry when we go to look at the torques. So what we're going to do, since I've gotten rid of nf as an unknown, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my axis down here at the bottom um, where the ladder touches the floor. I'm going to put my axis there, and we're going to sum the torques around that axis. Um, so let's add the torques. Um, well, we'll start up here. This normal force from the wall would provide a torque. We would need to peel off the component of this normal force from the wall that's sort of along this dashed line or opposite this known angle here. Um, and so that's going to be n wall sine theta would be the component of the normal force in the wall that's along this dashed line. 
So that's where normal force wall sine theta is. And we'll multiply it by L because it is a distance L away from the axis. It's the full ladder length away from the axis. So that's the first term. The second term would be the torque provided by the, the upward friction force here. And again, what we need to do is take the component of it that's along this dotted line. And that's going to be um, mu n cos theta. And the reason it's cos theta is it's adjacent to the known angle. And then also multiplied by L. So these two guys would tend to make a um, counterclockwise rotation of the ladder about this axis. So that's why those are on the left. Those would be like the counterclockwise torques. Mg is going to try to make a clockwise torque. Um, so those two counterclockwise torques provided by these two forces that are way up high are going to be counteracted by the clockwise torque created by mg. Well, so what we need for the torque created by mg, we need the component of mg perpendicular to the ladder. That's going to be mg cos theta. And then we're going to multiply it by a length of L over 2 because it, mg acts not all the way at the end of the ladder, but only halfway up the ladder. So there's our statement of torques here. Um, well, so now let's do a little bit of algebra to work on the um, eventually solving for the angle. Looks like we have an L that appears in every term. Um, so we're going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of the L's. And then also what we're going to do is we're going to move this term with cosine theta over to the right. So I've kind of done two algebra steps here. I got rid of the L's. So those babies are gone. And then I moved the term with cosine theta over to the right. And so what you get is uh, mg over 2, well, cosine theta, minus um, mu wall n wall cosine theta. So, that, so that's on the right. Why is it minus? Because I brought it over from the left to the right. Um, well, so we're almost ready to solve, start solving for this angle now, because if I now divide both sides by cosine theta, I'll get a tangent theta on the left. Um, so we'll do that. I've, again, I'm going to kind of do two algebra steps in one at once. I'm going to divide both sides by cosine theta. That's why I got a tan theta now. And I'm also going to divide both sides by normal force of the wall. Um, so that will make it disappear from this right-hand term, um, but it will make it in the denominator of this sort of, of, of this mg over 2 term. Um, and so now we're sitting here. There's an expression for the tangent of this, um, of this uh, angle, um, this maximum angle that I can, that I can, um, um, or excuse me, minimum angle that I can um, put the ladder at before it will slip. Um, well, so now what we should do is try to get um, rid of this um, uh, variable n wall and really just get it in terms of, uh, um, get n wall in terms of the weight of the ladder so that that will just completely disappear from consideration. Um, and so what we're going to do now is substitute our expression for n wall, which is cmg. And since n wall is cmg, that's going to cancel out the mg. So we're just going to get 1 over 2c for this first term and then still minus mu of the wall. Um, well, now we can then plug back in what c actually was. Um, and we get this. Um, so c is mu f over... 1 plus mu f mu w, but we're, we're, we have c in the denominator here. So that brings this 1 plus mu f mu w up to the top. Um, and then this mu f, that would be an expression for c, goes to the bottom. Um, and so we're sitting here now where we have an expression for the angle um, in terms of only these coefficients of friction. So we've basically solved it here. Um, just to make it prettier, what I'm going to do is get a common denominator on these two things. So I'm going to multiply this mu w um, by 2 mu f over 2 mu f just to get a common denominator. So that's what I've done here. This is purely to get a common denominator to make it look a little prettier. Um, and then now that I have a common denominator of 2 mu f, I can just kind of combine these terms. So the, the numerator will be 1 plus mu f mu w, but minus 2 mu f mu w's. And so that will make 1 minus mu f mu w in the, in the numerator. Um, and so here is our final pretty little expression for the tangent of the angle that you could tip the ladder to um, uh, before it would start to slip away. Well, so that is now our um, minimum angle at which we can tip the ladder um, before it will slide. And I really appreciate you watching and hopefully you found this thing helpful.